This right here is Kepler-186f. This is an exoplanet that is very Earth-like and may one day be able to support human life. But interestingly, uh, we also have a way to find out if certain planets out there may already have life. Today you're going to find out about this really new interesting method that we use to find if planets have life. And if you want to read more about this, there's actually a link in the description below that has a paper that mentions everything in detail. Welcome to What the Math and don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. And so here we're going to be looking at uh, Kepler-186f, which is probably the most Earth-like exoplanet we have to date. And um, it's an exoplanet that we think might actually, well, first of all, it doesn't actually look like this, obviously, uh, but we think that it's located in just the right area of the um, habitable zone, so in this green area, and we think that it's actually uh, very likely even, um, it might actually have liquid water on the surface. So it is a very Earth-like planet that I just turn it into. So here we go. So this is possibly what the actual face of this uh, exoplanet is. Uh, but interestingly, um, we actually have so many different ways of seeing if not only um, planet is actually habitable, but also if there already is some sort of a possibly life on it. And this interesting method is actually um, quite mathematical in the way it works. So basically the way it works is by looking at ratios, which you can kind of see right here, uh, of different elements on the surface and also uh, the atmosphere of a planet. Uh, so for example, let's just, let me just give you an example. Let's just imagine that inside of this atmosphere there is, uh, and we're just going to use what we have right now. There's a bit of water, there are some organics, and there's a little bit, or actually maybe a lot of hydrogen. If we detect this ratio in the way it is presented here, we'll know that very likely this is actually not a terrestrial planet, it's very likely not a hospitable planet, and it's possibly also a planet that uh, might even be um, not solid at all, and instead a gas giant like you see right here. But if the actual ratio is different, this planet will obviously change its appearance. Now this is obviously the rough uh, way of doing this, but there is a very, very precise way that the scientists actually measure what is actually present in the atmosphere of a certain um, exoplanet. And basically by studying various elements that they detect using uh, spectroscopy, or essentially by detecting what kind of elements are present in the atmosphere, they can kind of see uh, what is actually going on here. and. Uh, can even estimate if a certain planet is um, habitable for the human beings. But the, the paper that was actually published uh, very recently, specifically in late July of 2016, goes even further. And this is actually where the beautiful math comes in as well. Uh, the scientists from the Bern University uh, in Switzerland um, actually found a way to measure a very specific ratio between um, most important uh, molecules to life. And here we're talking about um, acetylene, which is uh, C2H2, ammonia, which is NH3, carbon dioxide, which is CO2, carbon monoxide, which is CO, ethylene, C2H4, um, hydrogen cyanide, HCN, methane, CH4, nitrogen, which is N2, and of course, water. Now, using the ratio between these molecules um, and using our understanding of how life actually functions, um, these particular scientists realize that they can, they can actually um, find out if a certain planet has life on it. Now, I'm not going to go into the detail of the actual math, and you can actually read the paper if you want by yourself because it's in the description below, uh, but uh, I'll just give you the nutshell of how they do this. And this is uh, just going to be a very simple example. So, let's just say that um, we discover that these types of planets right here have to have this type of a ratio. So they have, there has to be approximately 0.4% of water, 2.7% uh, of organics, and I guess 0% of hydrogen. So let's just say that uh, for all of these types of planets that you see right here, this is the ratio. Um, but then suddenly they start measuring the um, what they actually see on the planet and they realize that, well, there seems to be a lot more organics here and also maybe a lot more hydrogen. Okay, let's just actually go just a little bit below so it doesn't turn into gas giant. So there is now 0.7% of hydrogen and also 3.8% uh, of organics. Um, so something's happening here. The planet should be a little bit different, but it turns out that the organics and hydrogen are in a very different ratio to everything else. 
This implies to scientists that there possibly is some kind of a reaction going on here that is causing this to happen. And this reaction is possibly caused by some sort of life. And what's really, really exciting is that not only were they able to kind of hypothesize about this, but they were actually able to um, find a very specific, very beautiful, but at the same time, very complicated formula for how to actually calculate if this is actually happening. So for example, let's just go back to our planet Earth and uh, use something that's a little bit more familiar to us. So I'm going to go to Earth and we're going to go into materials again. And so here, I'm um, also going to look at this Earth similarity and the life um, likelihood. Surprisingly, it's actually not 100%. This is not a 100% Earth-like planet. Um, so anyway, so let's change this just a little bit um, just to show you how all of this will change. So um, let's just say that, for example, uh, there is no life on Earth. If there is absolutely no life on Earth, it's very, very likely that uh, we'll have some water here, but we also might not actually have any organics. And uh, we might just kind of have zero and zero here. Because there is no life, there is no actual reactions happening, uh, the atmosphere is not changing, um, this will actually have a very, very constant uh, ratio of all of these elements I mentioned previously. But because we do have uh, life on Earth, things change here all the time. So organics actually change. Um, we don't really have that much hydrogen, but what we do have here is carbon dioxide, which of course changes as well, and you can actually even see it change if I accelerate time. If I run this simulation uh, for a few years, you'll see that carbon dioxide ratio is changing because obviously we have things releasing it and then things absorbing it as well. Um, and uh, there's obviously reactions with water, there's obviously changes in oxygen and a lot of other elements that seem to be basically interacting with living creatures that are on our planet. And this interaction uh, essentially is a giveaway signal to, for example, aliens that might be looking at Earth right now, that there is something going on that is not really fitting our model of this particular planet. So this planet should not have this happening, but it seems to be happening. So we need to figure out why this is going on. And this is why um, even in this game, there is something called the life likelihood. Now, this, uh, this actually doesn't uh, depend on the actual atmospheric composition. This, I believe, depends mostly on the type of the planet and um, where it's located. Uh, but uh, using this new formula that uh, they've just come up with, we can now technically look at a planet and basically uh, within you know a few minutes be able to predict if there is a possibility of some sort of life on it. Because we can essentially, let's use something else for this, let's actually use one of the UAS systems. Uh, so we can now basically look at the planet, look at its um, emissions, its chemical emissions, and then be able to tell exactly if um, this planet actually is, you know, dead, it has no life, it just has a certain com uh, composition of different materials, or if it actually has some sort of a life likelihood and possibly even a life because its composition doesn't meet our models. And essentially, that is uh, what I wanted to talk about in this video. This is the essence of this really complicated paper with a lot of math in it, uh, but uh, it is a very interesting and very important discovery. And even though we technically have used similar ideas before, we have actually used chemical composition before, it was very, very, very complicated and required many different computer simulations uh, that were not very easy. But however, using this new mathematical model, we can now easily uh, look at a certain object. So let's just say we're gonna look at this, uh, calculate um, its uh, chemical emissions, and then use the uh, knowledge from this paper to essentially estimate um, if there is something happening here or if the so-called chemical uh, kinetics are not actually significant here, and if basically the so-called chemical equilibrium is not really being changed by anything lifelike. And of course, what this suggests is that um, chemistry is actually very, very important in astronomy, specifically atmospheric chemistry and environmental chemistry, which uh, we actually know quite a lot about on our planet Earth, is uh, essential for uh, studying different exoplanets, for studying possibility of living on another planet, and of course for studying uh, or for trying to find life outside of our planet Earth. And this is actually something we've previously even talked about when I was describing Titan. Um, there is a little bit of unusual chemistry going on on Titan, something that doesn't fit our model. And so some scientists actually think that Titan might already have some sort of a interesting life that we haven't really encountered anywhere else in the world. 
And anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to kind of show you the importance of chemistry and uh, give you an idea of how scientists actually use chemistry to try to figure out what is actually happening on a certain planet far, far away. And of course, how we use chemistry to try to figure out uh, if there is life outside. And of course, if you want to read more about this, uh, the paper is available in the description below. Check it out. It is a pretty interesting read. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who likes space videos and wants to learn more from video games. And also like this video if you've actually enjoyed watching it. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, bye-bye.